In order to better understand the equation for how the adjugate is related to the inverse of a matrix, assuming it exists, the easiest thing to do is to just introduce a few terms that help us better understand what's going on here. Now, I'll warn you that there's no good, at least as far as I can tell, good geometric representation of what's going on. It seems pretty messy. The best way to try to understand this, if you really want to understand it, is go through some examples and watch it unfold in the math. But the first thing to introduce is that for some matrix, there is an idea of creating the cofactor. And so let's say you have a three by three matrix. If we have some, let's go say that M is some three by three matrix. And we want to find the cofactor that's in the middle position. So let's say the matrix is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And there's one cofactor for every position. So there's nine, sorry, there's eight. No, there are nine, yes. Nine total cofactors for a three by three matrix, one for every element. And if you wanted to find, say, the cofactor for the position here for B in this, in this matrix, to do so, you are going to take the determinant of the matrix where you've canceled out and removed the row and the column for where that particular element is equal to. So the cofactor, and we'll call this the the row one position two. So the cofactor of one, two, right? One, two, row one, column two, is equal to the determinant in this case of the matrix D, I, and D, F, G, I. So D, F, G, oops, and I. Now it's a little more complicated than just the determinant because you then also have to multiply it by a plus or a minus, depending on how the, which position we're talking about. And the way you figure that out is there's a, there's a matrix of pluses and minuses. And it starts at plus and moves forward. And so you end up with a matrix that looks like this. It looks like plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, again. And so you look at whichever position your cofactor is in, and here it's a minus, so the cofactor in this case would be minus the determinant of DFGI, of the matrix DFGI. And that would be the cofactor for one, two, and that's what would go into B. And now you can introduce a concept of a cofactor matrix. And the cofactor matrix is simply the matrix by which you have performed the, and calculated the cofactor for every single position. C11, C12, C13, C21, C31, C22, C32, C23, and C33, right? Where you've sit, sat there, crossed out the elements of a particular row and column, calculated the determinant, multiplied it by the matrix of fat, matrix of positives and minuses relative to y. And this is this matrix is the matrix is the cofactor matrix. Now, for those of you that are familiar with the algebra for a two by two inverse and the process, this might sound familiar because that's sort of what you're doing. In fact, that's actually why this is so useful, because the definition of the inverse of a matrix actually requires calculating the cofactor matrix to some extent because there's a relationship between the inverse, the adjugate, the cofactor matrix, and the matrix itself. So now that we have our cofactor matrix, and we'll label this as the matrix C, we can now come up with, now define the definition for the adjugate or the classical adjoint.
the aggregate. So if we have some matrix M, the aggregate of M is equal to the transpose of the cofactor matrix. And again, if you've played around with, if you've played around with performing two by two or three by three inverses, these might all seem like familiar tricks because you're basically doing that, right? You're calculating the inverse and calculating the determinant of all these of all these things when you take out rows because you need to calculate the cofactor matrix. And now I'm telling you that the adjugate, the definition of the adjugate is the transverse of the cofactor matrix. That's all it is. That is the definition of the adjugate or the classical adjoint. Sometimes this will be written out. The adjugate is also known as the classical adjoint. of the matrix. Let's make that a little cleaner. And so now that we have this defined, we can come up with one last property. And I'm not gonna prove it because it's messy, but it is true that the determinant of some matrix M and we'll actually let's just transfer, um, let's convert to A here. The determinant of some matrix A is equal to the matrix A times its adjoint. It's classical adjoint or the adjugate. And so this is true. And again, the intuition behind this is not that easy because I don't, know off the top of my head a good representation um, of what the cofactor matrix does uh, in, in geometrical, in ge in, from a geometrical perspective, let alone with the transpose of the cofactor matrix is. So understanding how what A becomes when you apply the linear transform of A onto its adjugate, eh, it's not that, not that intuitive. We do know though, right, that the representation here, uh, what the, what the, geometric representation of the determinant is, and that is the degree, right? The factor by which it scales the vector space that it's, that, uh, that it's talking about. And now that we have this property, we now have a very neat definition then for the inverse. So let's go ahead and take the inverse of A and multiply it by both sides here. And that will leave us with the following. We get A inverse times the determinant of A is equal to, and these cancel out, just the adjoint of A. And finally, if we divide by the determinant, because that's just right a scalar, we get A inverse is equal to the adjoint of A divided by the determinant of A. And this is the equation and, and property that we used when substituting in the S minus, SI minus A inverse to get the determinant of SI minus A on the denominator of that transfer function and thus show that when we set that equal to zero, we're just finding the, the poles of, we're finding the eigenvalues of A, which are the poles of the transfer function. It's a bit of complex math, a lot of which I understand, I, it's not well, it's not at all intuitive and really you just have to sort of work through the math to prove it to yourself or work through the algebraic equation for two by two or three by three um, if you really care, but this is what's happening here. And so now we have a relationship between the inverse and the, ad, the classical adjoint or the adjugate and the determinant that can be very useful when poking around and trying to make sense of substituting in things when we're looking at control systems and the and the transfer function poles of, of and the poles of that of that system. So a brief bit of math just give you a background of what the classical adjoint is, what the adjugate is, which are the same thing, uh, and what the cofactor matrix is, which is probably something new, uh, a new idea, and tying it all together so that we can figure out how to manipulate either A itself or the inverse of A so that we can piece together and shape it as uh, shape the matrices around in different terms as we need.